12. Okay. Um, we'll take a look at, I guess, a few more pandas functions um, and look at tidy data, maybe kind of like restructuring, reshaping your data uh, as need be. Uh, so in, in R, we learned about, um, we had tidy R, which has the main functions gather and spread, and that's to kind of reshape your things. And pandas offer something similar. They call it melt and pivot. And we've actually already seen pivot, but um, um, melt is kind of like the gather function. So let's um, we'll start by loading our modules. And then uh, in here, I'm going to create a data frame. All right, so I don't know if you guys remember how to make a data frame, but you can do it by giving passing it a dictionary. And, uh, and so here I've got you know a few lists, and now I'm going to pass it uh, you know a dictionary and say the column name will be name, column treatment A will be the list treatment A TRA, and the column treatment B will be the list TRB. Okay. Um, and then, uh, so once you've created your uh, list, then um, then we can uh, melt it. Okay. And so this would be much like gathering. So if we want to, we can create a column that contains the treatment A and the treatment B value, and then the numbers that we want to store will will be in this column called result. Okay. And so the uh, the commands for melt, maybe maybe I'll parse this out. Is you give it the uh, the data frame, the name of the data frame that you're going to melt. Um, and technically, you can um, you can melt the data frame just with df and id vars. Okay, so you can also do uh, pd dot melt um, df and id vars um, equal to name. Okay, this is technically I think all you need in order to do this and it will still uh, it will melt the data frame and give the same result that we had before. Okay, so if I do this I get the same result. Um, everything else is or, or a similar result. The other things are um, if you only if you only provide ID vars then it will uh, basically melt all of the other columns. Okay, or it'll at least try to. Um, and then, but you know, if, if you want to specify which columns to melt, uh, you, you give it value vars, okay? And those will become the things. And then the uh, variable name, so here if you uh, just use the defaults, it will default to saying variable and default to value, and you can rename them to whatever you want. Treatment and result, and these these provide names of the columns. Okay, you can provide you can provide column names. Okay, but uh, you know otherwise, not necessary. Um, they're optional. Okay, so that's uh, that's melt. And that will um, basically uh, take take the column headings and uh, and bring them together. Okay, and then if you want to go the other way, if you want to do a spread, okay, then you uh, you use pivot. Okay, um, and pivot is much like kind of summarizing and then unstacking. And so in this case with pivot, so uh, a key thing. Um, when you're doing this and you forget the, uh, the, the notation is that you call pandas.melt, okay? So we have pd.melt and then you provide it the name of the data frame. To pivot, you call it directly on the data frame itself, okay? So you don't call uh, pandas.pivot and give it the name of the data frame. You say the data frame that's already been melted and then you want to pivot it. So you say melted.pivot, okay? So this, um, 
if you try to pivot something and it, it's not working out, chances are you're trying to call pandas.pivot rather than um, the pivot method on the data frame. Okay. So anyway, uh, you tell it you know the index that you want to use, and then you give it the uh, the name of the column. So in this case, treatment and result, because that's what we've stored here is melted. And uh, and then when you do that, um, and you pivot, and it, it spreads out the uh, the columns. Okay. Okay. Um, If you want to create a, a new variable, kind of like um, in Deplyery we had mutate to create a new variable, um, you can just almost call it directly. So here I've got uh, my data frame melted, which has the name column, the treatment column, and the result column. And if I just want to create a new column called gender, okay, I can just uh, just say melted um, bracket gender, okay? And so gender doesn't currently exist as one of the uh, the names, but when you do this, it will create a new uh, new column called gender, right? And so here I just give it a list, and it will um, populate it as such, okay? And uh, and then you know because I called it on um, melted gender, it it modifies melted, so it's not like I have to create a copy of melted or something like that. So th this is where we go. And then again, um, much like mutate, you can take current columns and, and modify them here. So here, uh, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to take the column treatment, which is currently strings, and then and rather than having to write treatment A, treatment B, I just wanted to say A or B. And so here I'm going to just take the, uh, the very last character from each of these things. So here I call um, so you know I can call melted dot treatment and this will give me the this series here. And then if I just want to take um, treat it as a string, um, then I've got strings here. And then we can use uh, slicing, right? So you can say, uh, you know, I want the first four letters, and that, and there you have that. Or you can say I want um, from the uh, the last letter on, um, you know, something like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And in this case, I just want the very last letter, so I'm going to use minus one to count. Uh, backwards from the end, and it pulls that. Okay, and so now, so now I have uh, basically strings of just a, you know, the very last thing here, a's and b's. Okay, um, you know, I, I, and much of these other things. So you could take result, and this is going to be um, a floating floating point, and uh, and you can um, then. Uh, you know, divide by, multiply by two or something. Whoops. Um, that took a, took a while to, uh, to calculate for some reason. <laughs> okay. Um, so you have that. Uh, you can also, I mean, you can treat them as strings also. Okay. Oops. Oh, you know, I have to do uh, as type. As type string. Okay. And then we'll get strings here. And then you can chop them off as well. So you can say like, I want the uh, the last. No. No. As type string. Oh, and then treat them as a string, and then um, take you know the last four digits or last three characters or something. Yes. The dot string, yeah, um, yeah. This is something I always have to keep track of myself. So, uh, as type will convert um, something that's not a string into a string. Okay. The treatment A. This is already 
a string. So I don't need to convert it to string. Okay, it's already a string. Um, but the, so when you do it as as type string, it converts these into strings. But then if you want to do something like slice up the string, okay. If if I start trying to say like oh, I just want the last two characters, okay, or something like this, um, this right here is a series. This is a pandas series. So so the method I apply here. Um, so if I say type on this, it's a it's a pandas series, and so using uh, this operator uh, minus two colon will just return the last two values in the series. Okay. When I do uh, dot string, this will be um, this now tells me that the string methods are available. Okay, and so it. Uh, um, so if I just, no, oh, no, that's just that. Okay, um, I think if I, I know, uh, you know, if I, oh, oh dear, Whoa. I wasn't expecting that. Um, that's different. But so here I've got the uh, the series, and then I tell it, you know, I want to use string methods, and now that I've done this, now I've got um, some string characters, and then I can use kind of the string methods here okay that, uh, that kind of clarifies the difference there so so this one uh, this is a series as type is a series after you convert it to a string type and then this will be like something that you apply to the string okay so this is, a, this is good though okay I noticed so, that when you as did... type makes a series and then, sorry, and then dot str um, allows for string operators. Okay, yeah. Sorry. When you did as type string, the nan all went lowercase. So mm. is that standard there? Um, or is that just because nan is its own case? I, I guess. Uh, I haven't given it too much thought. Okay. I guess, uh, yeah, when you when you take a nan and you make it a string, I guess it just becomes lowercase nan. But but it doesn't like lowercase other. Uh, I, yeah, uh, I don't know how that works. Just a weird yeah. Thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So so anyway, you can create new. New columns uh, that way. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know what we would do. We do we want to do um, melted dot name? So we would have to do string plus a dash and then melted dot. Um, TRT uh, TRT as a string, and I think this will melted dot. Oh, oh, you didn't do a I plus. Need, I need there. another plus. No, oh, no, no. this okay. Unsupported types for plus string methods and. String. Hmm. Oh dear. This is not okay. Never. Whenever you try to do something live on the fly, it uh, it breaks. I, I just wanted to uh, take this and do like Daniel A, mm -hmm. but uh, how do like I do that? Is it like a concatenate or something? I want the string as dot string methods. Uh, okay. All right. Never mind. I'm sure there is there's something. Is it 
I bet if I did maybe uh, dot str. Yeah. Oh. So you have to it's say string methods and then you say I want the whole thing. Something like that. Just requires some work work around thinking, I guess. Um, there's probably another way that doesn't require this <laughs> hack hack and slash method. But uh <laughs> This is this is my uh, my experience with uh, stuff in general. Okay, I'm sorry. You had a question. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, um, and then you can add that to one of the columns. Um, oh, okay. If you have different tables, you can you can join them together. So here I made a another table uh, or another data frame. Uh, with Amy, Betty, and Carl, and, uh, and we have this, and then we have our original one, Daniel, John, and Jane, and we've got uh, we've got these, and uh, and we can just concatenate them together, okay? And so pandas .concat will just basically glue one right on top of the other. So this is kind of like our bind. Um, Similar to R bind in R. Um, oh, I have to define these though. Okay, uh, but one thing we'll notice is that uh, so pandas always has a, an index column, and um, and if we ask about the uh, the if we look at the index column, it just kept them. So we had zero one two and zero one two, and so. If I say um, concatenated.loc location zero, this is going to return two rows. Maybe maybe that's what you want, okay? And if you take a look at you know the index itself, we see the index itself is zero one two zero one two, okay? And so the index in pandas doesn't have to be a, a unique unique thing, but if you want it to be a unique thing, um, and you're okay with the um, automated kind of range indexing, then um, when you call the concat function, you can use the option uh, ignore index, uh, set that to true, and then it will uh, concatenate them and then uh, redo the indexes. Hmm. Okay. So if you didn't ignore index, would it go like one zero one two zero one two? Mm-hmm. That's that's what oh, we have up here. Yeah. So that's that's exactly what happened when we um, didn't ignore the indexes. It kept the original ones, and then we would have two two things with zero indexes. And then here, ignore index true. Um, it it redoes the indexes. Well, what would happen if you tried to like iloc when you had this? So thing? so iloc will use the, oh, the, internal index. the kind of the internal uh, index. So over here, so working off of, so print concatenated here, if I do um, concatenated.iloc zero comma, this will just return the, uh, mm. the first, first thing. And then, um, and even though there's no, um, Location three, location three will return the row with Amy. Okay, so um, so iloc is unaffected. Interesting. Why does it that return? gets really confusing? Yeah. Why does it return it in like a weird shape? Oh, because um, it it kind of it says like oh you just want one row and then so returns. I think this is uh. I think this is a series in of itself. It's just, um, it's just, uh, so it'll return this, but you can do like three colon four and then it will, no, I'm sorry, three colon five and it will return the, the those, those lines. And this will be, this will be a data frame. So when it when it has the opportunity to kind of reduce it down, um, it it will. Okay, so iloc is unaffected. So 
um, the Y, that was just the design choice when they when they did the thing. Okay, so this uh, returning only one row reduces to a series. Okay. Um, yeah, R can't do that with a data frame. But with a matrix, it will, right? If you call one row in a matrix, it'll reduce it to a vector type of thing. And with a data frame, um, we don't have the we don't have a series type in, in R. Uh, so returning one row will still be a data frame. But in pandas, you have a, a series that can go, you know, column or row. They're both series uh, things. Okay. Uh, let me think. What else do we have? Yeah, uh, that's that. Okay. Um, this is kind of a, a neat little thing. So I've got in my folder, and I've uploaded these also. This is just, you might sometimes, um, you know, you might download a bunch of files from a website, like oftentimes government websites. It'll be like, you have to download the file for January, and then the file for March, and then April. And then it's like really annoying to have to um, load each file one by one. So you can um, take advantage of this kind of the, the concat feature and um, you know a few, few things in Python to get them all to go into once, OK? So there's, uh, there's this module called glob. And uh, so you import that. And then you know, in your working directory, um, you can specify kind of patterns, files that match a certain pattern. So in this case, um, I'm going to try to find all files named example star.csv. I mean, if you just did star.csv, whoops, um, it'll print all the files that are um, .csv, but that's too much. So. Um, so here I got you know example star.csv and I've got uh, these three files and you know these are obviously we're assuming that all the files are in the same form format okay and then so I'm going to create uh, a small uh, a list that is going to um, can be a list of data frames create an empty list this will be a list of data frames. All right, so here I've got um, list data, empty list, okay, and then I'm gonna go over uh, this list of file names, okay, and say say for file and file names, and we're gonna say um, take data and do um, pandas dot read csv file uh, header equals zero means um, row zero is the header, okay, and then we do um, and then we take the data, and then we're going to append data to list. Okay. And so when I'm done, and I print list data, okay, the list itself is a. Uh, it's going to be a list of three, okay, and three elements in my list. Each element is a da data frame. So this is the contents of example one, and this is example two, and example three. And you know, so if I say, you know, what is list data um, at index zero? That's that's my first um, data frame that I loaded up, okay? And uh, and I could, you know, what is that type? That's the data frame. So it's a it's a list of data frames. I've got three data frames in there, and then if I want to join them all into one big data frame, then I just do uh, pd concat pandas dot concat, and then uh, we concatenate over the um, list of data frames. So it's going to take each data frame in that list and then just concatenate them all. Okay. So here, again, so this is, I've got three separate data frames in this list. And it's hard to see, but there's like one comma that separates list one, uh, data frame one from data frame two from data frame three. And then when we, when we run PD concat over that entire list, it, uh, it joins them all into one one data frame. Yes. So 
So since it's a list of data frames, does that mean that they all have to have the same variable name? No, they do need, for PD concat to work, mm -hmm. they need to have the same variable names. So, so yes, in this part, they technically don't need to have the same variable names. You just have, you have different data frames all stored in a list, okay? But um, if you want to concatenate them so they all kind of join up, then they, they all need to have the same, um, same variable names, okay? But, um, but this, this could be handy, especially when dealing with, you know, government websites with these CSV files, one for each month. Yes? So if, like in your example, you had like a different CSV for each month, would you create like a new variable so that you could identify which lines are from which, which? Oh yeah, that would CSV? be. Because um, yeah, if, uh, I assume like if you want, if they were separated, you would only see trends between each specific. CSV yeah, that would be a good, uh, good thing. Let me see. I don't know if I can. Can I do that directly? Um, could you do that like before you can catenate? Yeah, I guess uh, you'd have to, you'd probably want to do it right here. So data is pd.readcsv, and then you would do um, data.month um, will equal, uh, I guess you'll just do uh, the file name. Can we do that? Oh, this is going to break on me, isn't it? Um, so somehow I need to... Uh, duplicate this. Um, I need to create a series. Um, so I gotta um, I gotta, let me let me reference pandas series uh, duplicate. Well let's just see. Um, what happens if, all right, let me just look at, this is a, this is a good question here. Okay, so we got, let me look at concat2, which is right here, okay, and then if we want to do a, month can I just say is uh, June okay so that does work all right um, okay so then I think I can just do data month equals uh, we'll just call it file all right the uh, it's using the the name of the file so it's gonna at least um, so we'll append a column with the file name, and then um, all right, and then we'll try this. Let's see. Okay, so oh, I got that, yay. and then look at that. All right, and then so, so now uh, you can at least see the origin of which file it came from. So okay, so yeah, just uh, modify your. Um, your loop to to include that if that if that's what you want. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. Okay. Um, I guess that took less time than I thought. Um, I can talk about merges. So, um, but I might have to make some data for this to work. Um, Okay, so merging, you might have, uh, all right, let's go back and we'll take this and, uh, and this. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so we've got uh, this data frame And then um, we'll do the same, and then we'll 
we'll have treatment C and treatments D. Okay, and then I'll just replace this with a zero. Okay, and we'll call this treatment uh, C and treatment D, and then maybe we'll call this uh, patient or something like this. And then um, to further mix it up, these appear in different orders. John. Here, and let's let's have different ones. We'll have Daniel, John, and Jane over here, and then we'll have John, Max, and Jane over here. Okay. So I've got um Wait, you didn't you didn't change the I didn't treatment I didn't a change this thing. Okay. Treatment C and treatment D. Okay. So I've got uh, Daniel, John, Jane over here, and I've got John, Max, and Jane. And um, and let's say I want to merge these two together. Okay. So um, let me consult my notes here. Um, so we would do a. Um, I want to say pandas pd.merge and we have um, data frame dot merge on left on right on okay and inner outer left okay so I would oh okay wait we're gonna call this one this one df1 I'm going to call this left, df left, and this one will be called df right, just so we can kind of keep track of this. So I've got df left, df right, and then I'm going to do df left dot merge, and then I want the uh, Data frame, so this is going to be uh, DF right, okay, and we want to merge um, left on and right on, okay. So the left on column is, so we're going to use the name. We're going to try to match up name with patient, okay. So the the one that you called merge on is going to be known as your left table. So this is, I'm calling merge on the left table, and you give it the name of the right table, and we're going to use um, name, and the right table uses the column patient, okay? Mm. And when you do this, its default is uh, an inner join, and it's only going to join based on inner join. Uh, will return only rows that exist in both. Okay, so that's that's what we've got. We've merged on the left is uh, that, and, and it finds the name over here. Um, the mode, the how. Okay, so uh, so I'll just show you all of these, all of the different hows. <laughs> okay, so um, on the how equals left on the left join um, will return all the rows in the left table and um, rows from the right table that matches. So this will return um, Daniel, John, and Jane, but Max will not be found. And then where it doesn't have it, it, uh, it gives us NANs. Okay. The uh, if I change how to right, this is a right join, and it just uh, returns all the rows in the right table and rows from the left table that matches. So this will return um, John, Jane. John, Jane, and Max on the uh, on the right table. It returns all of those and just the ones that match over here, and then the last one being kind of the union, this would be the outer join. And this will return um, 
all uh, rows from both tables. Okay, and so we'll get uh, John and Jane and Max appears and Daniel uh, also appears. Okay, this this was a one to one. Um, you can also have a uh, like a one to many scenario, um, and these get a little bit more complex. <laughs> um, all right, let me. Is there a way we can reduce it so we don't have the names repeating? Have all the um, names so repeating? you can, uh, you mean like get rid of name and patient? Or get rid of just one of them. So like if we had name and Max was moved over to the name column, uh, then you could so still you, have all the other rows. Just uh, no. Okay. Um, <laughs> you, I guess you could do that with the inner, inner join. With an inner join, you're allowed to you can get rid of one of these things because these these would be d duplicate columns. Mm -hmm. um, but then, oh, you're asking we want we want to create a new column that is Daniel, John, Jane, and Max. Yeah. So that uh, you would have them. Can't we just say that like the name column wherever it's N A N take the patient value and then delete the patient column. Um. Maybe let me see. Let's see. Uh, right index, right on right sort suffixes copy indicator validate. Um, yeah, I'm sure there's. Uh, I'm sure we can make a new column. Um, it's just not coming to me right now. Or just like editing the name column as it is. Yeah. And then do um, like yeah. Yeah. So okay. So if I do uh, all right. So let's say um, so this will be called uh, we'll call this merged. Will be this. Here, here, I'll just okay. So I've got merged is this, and then we'll do print merged. Okay, and then um, so we want merged dot name, and, uh, and basically uh, I want for. Can't you do it just by like with an R sign thing? Just like merge dot name uh, where merge dot name equals N A N, and then just assign that to so like merge dot patient. Okay. Um, What's the is nan? Is it just is is nan? Uh, yeah, numpy is nan. Does that work? Okay, np dot is nan merged name. No, it doesn't like this. We can probably do it. <laughs> I think, I think it's a little bit um, requires a little bit more effort, uh, though. <laughs> so, so let, let me let me think, and then if when I figure it out, I, I can update it here. Um, let me uh, let me just show you very quickly, kind of uh, like a one to many type table, okay? Or a one to many merge, okay? So here I've got uh, df left, and then um, and maybe let me um, okay so we're gonna do DF right and this we will have uh, Daniel Daniel John John and uh, so we've got Daniel shows up twice here and John shows up twice, and this will be like um, parents. We'll just okay, and this will be um, mom, dad, and then uh, mama <laughs> and papa. Okay, <laughs> so we've got name and uh, parents. Will be parents. Okay, so I think this will work. I hope. Let me just 
I just want to look at this print df write. Okay, so we have this, and then all right, let's do a join. So we'll do df left dot merge, um, and we want to join with df right, and I can just say on equals name because um, the name column uh, matches. Right, so I don't have to do on left and on right because the name column matches here. So, so Daniel is uh, has NAN and forty two for treatment A, and then for each appearance over here, we've got um, uh, they 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 appear. So, so the contents that appeared uh, only once, they get um, they each get duplicated each time here. Okay. Um, so this is a yeah well because it, it Cause there's no one. it's still an inner join so this is a one to many inner join okay in that it's only going to return uh, matches that exist in the left and right so it returns only rows that match in the left and right and then um, for uh, for rows that uh, appear multiple times in the right, the contents in the left uh, gets duplicated. So so that's what we have there. All right. Um, and then what are, what are other things? So. If you, under, if you understand these merges here, then when eventually when we get to SQL, uh, all of that stuff will, will be, be easy. But the, the merging on the left and the right and the inner and the outer joins, uh, that's probably the, I don't know, uh, most confusing aspect of SQL. But, uh, but if you understand how all of these things work, then, then we'll be good for, uh, for the SQL stuff. OK. Um, I still have to figure out how to get your <laughs> for you guys to tell me where your data set is or what, what your data set will be. So, uh, but that will that will come up, and I'll, I, I won't penalize anybody for being late on this thing. At least as long as it, we get it in by, by next week, um, and then because it's not up yet, right? Yeah, it's not up right now. Yeah, and then on Monday I'll talk about the midterm exam. Once and then post practice stuff I probably won't post a practice, but I'll post like um, just some just like some system check documents so that like you can make sure like how like the data file will download and that you can open up you know the notebook and make mm -hmm. sure you can save it as a you know HTML and submit it and things like that just because you don't want to be worrying about that during your like two-hour window so okay um, we'll end here have a great weekend and uh, wish your moms a happy Mother's Day and uh, we'll see you guys on Monday